Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Heather and I am taking you through my journey to cure my emetophobia with the Cure Your Emetophobia and Thrive program by Rob Kelly. So with my responsibilities at work and here at the farm, I don't have a lot of availability right now to um, really be reading the book. Um, so I'm doing about a paragraph, possibly two, uh, every evening before I go to bed. And as well as I'm still doing the journaling, as well as my daily mantra, my visualizations, and working on some of my locus of control points that are still a little bit problematic for me. So for the Thrive Program, um, as I was mentioning in my last video, there's the three major components of your psychological foundation. And so we've got the self-esteem, the social anxiety, as well as your locus of control. Those three pieces, those numbers uh, culminate into your thrive factor. So this week I went through with my consultant uh, just to see where we are with my thrive factor. Since this is the second time that I'm going through the program, we're doing things a little bit differently so we're working ahead a little bit in the book um, than where I actually am in my reading so we did the the other two quizzes today the self-esteem and the social anxiety and I'm really pleased to say that my thrive factor has gone down significantly I started at a 55 back when I started the program I believe back in October I want to say so 55 is pretty high. My social anxiety was at 90% um, and my self-esteem was very, very low. So I am pleased to say that today I am at a 26, which is very, very good. I'm, I'm really pleased with that progress. So uh, one thing that I've been spending a lot of time in the last week on has been the relationship between the mind and the body. In chapter two, Rob has um, had you go through the Chavril's pendulum exercise. So this one is a really good demonstration of the strength of the mind over the body. Um, I really recommend if you've got the book and you're going through the program to really spend some time with that one and really think about it because for me, uh, a lot of my anxiety um, kind of comes out in, in physical ailments, uh, as, mo as it does for most of us. So I've got a lot of physical symptoms that are very distressing for me right now. I've got a lot of dizziness, a lot of stomach pain, nausea, heartburn, indigestion, just constantly um, things going on in my stomach. Uh, and that has really led me to allow myself not to eat. So I've spent a lot of time the last week for me personally going through what it means to have the mind have so much so much power to, to really um, consider how it affects what I do and how I feel inside. And it was really important for me to spend that time and, and to make that that determination that that is really what's going on you know um, we do have to make that determination for ourselves and it's taken me a lot of time but it really does make a lot more sense I mean I've been scoped and scanned and x-rayed and poked and prodded and there's nothing wrong with me there's nothing wrong with my body it's all from up here so um, now that I've kind of made peace with that and I'm working on how to change my thinking to more positive and productive thoughts, I can move on. So I am probably in about the middle of chapter three, the locus of control chapter, and working on becoming more internal, realizing that I do have power over my life. I am responsible for my life and I am, I am powerful. I will overcome this. And so, we did go through, like I said, the, the social anxiety and the self-esteem. Um, so I am working on some points from those quizzes. One thing that I'm working on from the locus of control quiz is my life is affected by how other people 
see me or how uh, my life is affected by other people. And I really need to stop that. I used to be really bad about that. Um, I've gotten a lot better over the years, but I'm still not there. So um, social anxiety is a big part of that component of the locus of control. So what I've done this week is at our staff meeting, I never participate. I sit there in the room full of 25, 30 people in the corner with my notebook and I take notes or doodle or drift off into space. And um, so this time, instead of waiting with my question until the end and asking it privately to my manager, I went ahead and I spoke up. And I didn't get anxious about it. I didn't have a panic attack. The world did not come to an end. Nothing happened. My question was answered and the meeting continued. So um, those little challenges are really helping me to kind of let go of some of the pieces of this anxiety. It's I'm going to have to keep working at it. I'm going to have to keep challenging myself and showing myself that yes, I am powerful and that it doesn't matter what people think of me or um, how they view me. I'm a good person and I'm a smart person and it's okay if someone doesn't like me. So I did that. Um, then another thing that I did this week was saying no. So again, I don't want to let people down. I'm a big people pleaser. I'm a huge perfectionist. And so um, I had someone come to me this week and ask me to take on yet another project. My workload right now is full. I'm full up to the top. I can't do any more. I've got no more time. Normally my work day is about 8 to 5 with an hour lunch. I am doing at least 45 hours a week right now, which may not seem like a lot to some people. I know some people work 60 or 80 hours a week, but for me, 45 plus. Um, with my responsibilities here at the farm, that's a lot. So um, I just, I was asked to take on that project and I said no. And again, nothing happened. The world didn't come crashing down around me. Nobody freaked out and said, you're fired. They just, she just said, okay, I understand. We'll find someone else to, to take on the project. And I finished my day. So um, that was another really good thing. So. Processing those little challenges and those little triumphs have been really positive for me. It's something that's going to bring up your self-esteem. Just celebrating those, those little things um, throughout your day that do go well and that do make you feel good. Uh, so I will continue to work on little points from each of those quizzes and kind of work on that psychological foundation to build on uh, what I've already got going and the progress that's already happened for me. Um, I'm going through this a lot more slowly this time and working on things a little more carefully. Um, I would say that it's going to be really important for you to take your time and to do the exercises and to understand them. So Thrive isn't a program that you can just pick up the book and read it and you're cured. It doesn't work that way. You do have to put in the daily effort and the, the daily work. And it's not always easy. It's a really simple theory, but it does take a lot of effort. But it's worth every moment, every moment of your time. So I hope to, in the next two to three weeks, have some more time to devote to the program and to actually have more helpful things to say um, to help you along, but I do hope at this point that these videos are at least a little bit helpful for you so that you kind of get a little insight into how things are going with the program and maybe inspire you to give it a try. It's a really simple process, like I said, it, but it is worth it. It's Everything is in here. Everything's here. You just have to take the time and really want it. Really, really want it. So until next time, I should be back uh, in a week, maybe two, and uh, hopefully we'll see a lot more progress. So until then, bye.